Hello, hello. So I've been <laughs> I haven't really published a lot of videos on this channel regarding Rainer Werner Fossbender, but <laughs> he keeps on he's he's a constant through line through this channel. Um I actually started out like my first year of recording videos, I recorded one for The Marriage of Maria Braun. The second year I watched Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant and Katzelmacher and a bunch of his other stuff. And I was supposed to publish a a video on Lola, his third to last film. Um but it, it, we'll see once this video comes out whether or not I've finished editing that. If so, you can watch it here. Anyways, my relationship with Fossbender has been really complex and really engrossing, despite the fact that I'd never seem to publish the videos on his works. Uh, if anything, it's because in hindsight, I always feel like I don't have enough to say about his stuff because they're so complex, they're so suffuse, and yeah, I just felt like I should watch another one, especially since it's Pride Month. <laughs> um, uh, Fox and His Friends is a 1975 German film by director Rainer Werner Fassbinder. It catalogs the life and times of one uh, Franz Fox Bieberkopf after he wins the lottery for a massive, massive sum. And guess what happens? The movie's an, an intensely dark and funny and raw interpretation of the push and pull we have under the let's say delusion of love how much we are willing to blind ourselves and how much we're willing to give of ourselves um, when entranced by another human being whose sole purpose in life is to milk every last penny out of us it's a thrilling thrilling movie helmed by Fassbender himself in the lead role yeah so you should watch it with me so let's do it let's watch Fox and his friends. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And Michael Ballhaus, famous cinematographer for Fassbender, who Scorsese would later use for Age of Innocence, I think. And there's our man Fassbender. Oh, what a way to open a film. Fassbender's looking svelte. I wonder if there's like, I, I don't, I, I really wouldn't know um, how to separate it in terms of the like career, the chronology of Fassbender's films, but uh, bidding goodbye to the female workers at the carnival show. I wonder if that's a kind of separation to delineate that this film will be uh, particularly interested in the like the male sex and the, the male side of Fassbender's own interests and fascinations, especially with um, Paula being the um, Fassbender regular. Oh, I recognize him. He's the uh, the, he's the actor in um, in 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 a uh, peeping tom. I didn't know he was German. German. It's just so interesting the array of actors that Fassbender used in a relatively short amount of time, within a very select region. Just the amount of foreign stars, stars of different generations that managed to funnel in and out of his. Um, Cavalcade, his cavalry, his little boutique of actors. Is the Munch there? Mm -hmm, so ziemlich. Auf was stehst du denn? <laughs> Ein schöner Rücken kann entzücken. Ein schöner Bauch auch. He does like the back. The back is prominently displayed with his, uh, with a uh, Shigola. Oh, halt doch mal an. Ich bin der Raum, lieblich geweise. It's really interesting, this kind of, I don't know, energy that Fassbinder is exuding. Uh, I wouldn't really think of him as an, naturally a very uh, like sexually captivating person, but he's portraying it really well in this character. And I wonder where, where are like the signifiers in his dress or his demeanor that makes him that kind of spells out this kind of charisma or this sexual appeal to the people who will notice it. 
Is it by the fit of his pants, the length of his sleeves, the the way his hair is styled? What what exactly is he using to signal in this kind of like hidden language of homosexuality or of male attraction? What he's bringing to these men? Boom. Also, manchmal gibst du dich mit Leuten ab, meine Liebe. Sehr eigenartig. Carl Bohm strikes a remarkable figure. Dick, wo hast du denn den aufgerissen? Auf einer Klappe? Beispiel hat vor zwei Wochen 500.000 Mark im Lotto gewonnen. What? He already won? Mark, meine Liebe. Oh, those nails. Ach, äh, tanzen Sie mal mit mir. Ich? Klar, oder schiele ich? Es gibt Leute, die schielen, obwohl sie eigentlich nicht schielen. Hast du mir schon beigebracht, mit Anstand reich zu sein? Es ist keiner von denen, die reich sind, wenn sie Geld haben. This is like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna pause for a second, because I'm already getting a little bit discombobulated. It's really interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to speak well on it, because I don't know enough, but, um... Fonspender, even if, like, ostensibly his plots may not seem that interesting to you, or his uh, characters may seem a bit elusive, I think his selection of, like, time or era is always so particular and so evocative like he always chooses the right like striking point of when different eras and different sentiments are overlapping and you kind of see the transformation the process of change and dynamic change sometimes outrageous change sometimes subtle changes between uh one era one zeitgeist to another and i think this this is in keeping with that that um like earlier the grosser remark that she hasn't been called frau since 1953 that uh there's this intersection of time when fox and his friends takes place that is um a time of economic change in germany the depletion of the um wealth and the status of the uh older generation the last remnants of the aristocracy that kind of like belle époque age that obviously withered in the first world war and died off in the second and this emergence of the new kind of german economy that also is tied into um like american capitalism and um globalism and this new emergence of like free sexuality and the open display of sexuality and the interaction between that and the old guard and fox is kind of like a representative of these um changing sentiments that he um, has a sexuality that's on display. He uh, listens to American rock music. He uh, wears leather when everybody else is wearing linens and fabrics. Like it, there's so much, so much subterfuge and like secret signals going on in the movie that I I can't really pick up on at all. But it's really really exciting. It's really fascinating to see um, the subtle. To an outsider, to an American, the subtle ways that Fox buffs up against the norms of society, and that's part of his appeal, that's part of his attraction, and the ways in which those things that are like subtle to me seem outlandish and seem very apparent to the Germans in the society with within uh, to, within the society with within eh, the Germans in the society in which he inhabits. It's really interesting. Wow. So much is being expressed to the eyes. It's really, really, really thrilling. It's like an entirely a different language than I I speak. Tja, ich fahr dann auch. Ich muss zu meiner Mutter, du weißt. Ja, Liebling. Kommst du dann zum Frühstück? But I love these movies that are doing so much with the eyes. This, the works of uh, Celine Sciamma. Uh, Mess is a movie that was previously discussed doing this. Viel Spaß noch. Oh, komm schon. It's a really interesting movie about of, of signifiers. They don't need to explain things through dialogue because there's such embedded culture. I know him too. Where do I know him from? Wow. Wow. They're like simultaneous repulsion and curiosity towards this figure. And is, is it him? Is it his sexual appeal? Is it his money? All of that it is laid within these exchanges, these glances, and because it's never said explicitly, you never know wh what is the underlying component, what is the key. Uh -huh. 
Ooh, those subtle movements of Balhas. Okay, so there's a repeated remark about how um, Fox smells. Fossbender's looking good. It's great that he managed to shoot himself in this time. This be preserved forever, this shining beauty. This moment in his life when he was captivating. When he was deeply feeling himself. Who knows, he might have been deeply into drugs or deeply into depression, whatnot. But the form will be preserved. And I really like how this also plays on a dynamic uh, that's prevalent in a lot of Fassbender's work of like, um, I don't know, of like Dom and Sub, of Master and... and slave of, of master and servant um that the dynamics are kind of like skewed and messed up that there's a supposed hierarchy based on class based on um culture based on learning that this character would have over over fox but it's being overridden it's being disoriented by his possession of cash by his possession of charisma sexuality like there's a way that they, they're interacting there's an orthodox way they interact based on hierarchy that's being thrown into um confusion That was a really nice rack. Oh my god, how long did they have to take to get to plan that? Ach der. Ach der. Hab ich mir doch gleich gedacht. Warte doch. Ich kann dir das alles später einmal erklären. Ja. Eugen. 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 Yeah, and you can see how the like the older generation or the older systems, the things that were like maintaining society or uh, were foundational to society are actually um, rotting in at the core. That they're actually destabilized and about to break down, and it's this time of um, upheaval that the new generation doesn't even know. It's about to take over the old. And the old is trying as best to preserve its position, to maintain the facade of of um, of stateliness, of calm, but scraping, but uh, and searching, and desperately, desperately trying to find something to sustain itself through this upheaval. And these things that he wears to signify himself as like masculine or a higher status in the lower rungs in the, the society that he's from, the culture that he's from, actually spells him out to be more outlandish and outrageous and uh, like cheap and dirty within the higher rungs that he's trying to enter. There's like really, really subtle things that are being expressed in just like the nothing that like Fox says about himself, but the way he presents himself and the way that he's like quietly judged by both rungs within this uh, social hierarchy. He doesn't know how to order food at this restaurant. It's just so f***ing embarrassing. But who f***ing cares? These these fucking German restaurants that are trying to be fucking French and it has nothing to do with the interchange of French and German culture. They're just trying to replicate a French bistro to display the trappings of French culture, the trappings of the bourgeois, trying to appear more posh. It's all a fucking facade. Ich werde dann einen Sprachkurs belegen, wenn wir öfters zusammen essen gehen. I wonder, like, within, like, um, Fassbinder's career, if this is also kind of, like, in terms of the autobiographical elements or the just, like, incorporating elements of his life, if this was during a time when he was reaching more kind of an international audience and getting more recognition and interacting with more of this kind of, like, uh, class or this facade of class, the, the upper rungs of society. Hello. Oh. Or if this is something that Fassbender kind of like always felt or always knew, the kind of humiliation of interacting with old money or interacting with cool people, people who have something that you will never have. 
Wie bitte? Siehst du? Karl Heinz Bohm is great. Wow. He really has star power. Maybe it's just because I know him from something else, but he eats up the screen. There's a, there's like a wonderful kind of like interplay in Fassbender's work between the banal and the melodramatic. Like characters are so are so downplayed in some aspects, like when they're extremely cruel or when they're extremely callous. There's some things that are portrayed in such a blasé way, but it's also contrasted with characters that portray such extremity or i don't know it's just something in the actors or something there's there's such uh, a melodramatic air to them and some of the these actors possess that certain quality that you could see them in a uh, as a star of a fassbender film you could see them as a star of a of a cirque film and bohm has that and of course, it's the prerogative of the rich man to try and steal from the poor man in order to fund his richness even further. Well, now I know that uh, Fassbender was uncircumcised. Good to know. And where is Eugen? Oh, he is at the 5 o'clock tea with the friends of his father. So, so, friends of his father call this now. Hello. Tag. Tag. What the f*** is that, by the way? What the f*** is that? I have no idea what the f*** that is. <laughs> what the f*** is that? Seit wann beschäftigt sich Eugen eigentlich intensiver mit der Firma? Och, ich glaube, er will da ganz einsteigen. Sag dir Mineralwasser, bitte. I should have gone to a spa when I was in Europe. Just to take a leave of land. Firma Thies Großbuchbinderei. But you're made acutely aware that you don't speak the same language as the people who are there. This is a, c a certain kind of experience that Fox is experiencing. There are certain aspects that he already kind of like knows and understands and can navigate and there are others that he doesn't wo eugens vater sich doch in zahlungsschwierigkeiten befinden soll sag mal meinst du he needs money könnte es sein dass eugen vielleicht mit mir über sowas no i think he'll talk about it with you huh? kann sein Der Eugen, das ist nicht so was für zwischendurch. Das ist eine richtige Liebe. Poor baby. Wenn er dich nur nicht ausnimmt. That's exactly what he's gonna do. Hat ihn nicht. Schaust du mich so an? This is something I really love in Fassbender's work. That um, characters may seem duplicitous, they may seem scheming, um, but they have like one. They have like one crutch. They have one central love, where they have to funnel all of their hopes and dreams in and that's kind of like what motivates them to do whatever bad things are on their mind and it turns out the thing that they love don't love them in the same way and they also similarly have a crutch that they love and are doing all of the bad things in per in service of oh no in bar in bar yeah in bar 100,000 Mark in bar in bar in bar in bar sagten sie in bar in bar in bar Oh god. Fool, 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 fool. This is definitely something like an element of Fassbender's own life. Willing to take out all of his money to give to his love, to his grand love, somebody who will never return the intensity of affection he shares for them. It's really wonderful to see how coolly he can translate this a really horrible aspect of his own life, so casually translated it into a, a dramatic event in a movie. Okay. No, no seeming like degree of sympathy or like melodramatic. I don't know. There's no, there's no like, uh, really bar. feeling like. Bar. Bar. <laughs> it means nothing. Yeah. But like, there's no, there's no real sympathy for uh, Fox. He's not. Or Franz, he's not really seen as like uh, a hero for doing this. You're not even like really uh, privy to any like grandstanding morality or reason that he's doing this. His, uh, his reasons for doing this seem really, really foolish. And you're allowed as an audience to make a judgment of it, but you're also <laughs> you, you're kind of forced to face the reality of when you've made decision, decisions like this in your own life. He is not afraid to portray his central characters as fools, as ruled by emotions, as 
um, cavalier, as idiotic, as manipulative, all of these things, and in a judgmental way, but even within that string of judgments you as an audience have for these characters, somehow there's an aspect of yourself that's revealed in it. You're seeing how willing you are to continue down a dark path in order to get the one thing that you want. How willingly and how, how willingly and how blindly. Is this a savior's Petrovod cat? If so, that's like a wonderful kind of diptych. No, Petrovod can is three years before this. But in a similar way to like how we evaluate Schrader as like revisiting the same narrative over and over again. Um with little variations, you can kind of see how Fassbender revisits the same narrative over and over again, the same kind of psychodrama over and over again with different um, permutations. He really doesn't need this apartment. Come on, Matt Damon, you really don't need this apartment. I love, I love, I mean, this is, I'm going to pause for a second. I love the production design on Fassbender's work. It's like, I don't know, sometimes it's glaring and it's obvious, but even if it vacillates between the obvious and the subtle, like you could really see a consistency as his work progresses and as he gains more money, obviously, but you could see the detail with which he like kind of portrays different worlds through just like the interior furnishings of his different characters, the way that they inhabit spaces, the certain places that they occupy and refuse to occupy. Uh, it's really, really cool to see the different ways that we can understand uh, Fox and um, Eugen and, uh, and, and Max. And Max, by the way that they live, by the houses that they live in, like uh, we're shown almost nothing of, of Fox and his sister's lodgings. It's his sister's apartment, after all, um, or flat. And... <clears throat> We're given an illusion of what Eugen is based on their first interaction because they first meet in Max's uh, summer estate or wherever, and it's like it's rich and splendid. And when they actually meet up to make love for the first time, it's a little bit disconcerting. It's a little bit like less than you'd expect it to be because his flat is portrayed as very sleek and it's very modern in contrast to max's but as you inhabit this space longer and longer you find out that it's a little bit tawdry or it's a little bit messy and dirty and it's a little bit more cramped than you'd expect it to be and all that kind of culminates with him like leaving out the door and you see that it's like on the third floor of a apartment building or whatever with the spiral stairs going down and you actually see in a way that it's like ch cheaply furnished that he, on he only has like posters and books up. And these are things that you notice perhaps uh, subliminally, but that Fox doesn't notice because he comes from a lower rung than that. He can't really um, identify the differences between uh, where Eugen lives and where Max lives. Or if he can, he doesn't know the subtleties of difference to the degree that Max would, or that Eugen would. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous how much is, like, kind of portrayed in, in about the livelihoods of these characters, about the interior lives of these characters, without ever having to spell it out dire directly. Yeah, and these Intarsians are very well gearbeitet and very sauber. Yeah. And what costs that? <laughs> furniture built solely for the purpose of a threesome there's those stairs again the spiral staircase hmm. you hate to see it young man's signature style destroyed by poshness oh it's him again interessant willst du jetzt auf deine alten tage auch noch bürgerlich werden was It's this really weird character tick. I don't know if it's just like keeps happening this way or if it's a deliberate mm. costuming choice. Okay. But Eugen always has his left collar app popped out. What a weird choice. Um einen Darlehensvertrag zwischen der Firma Thies und Herrn Franz Bieberkopf zu unterzeichnen. Beginnen den Vertrag vorzulesen. 
He really needs a lawyer. UHG als Sicherheit für diesen Kredit werden Herrn Franz Bieberkopf Außenstände im Wert von DM 100.000 in Worten 100.000 abgetreten, die jedoch durch die Firma Thies OHG eingezogen werden. Gerät die Firma Thies OHG in Zeit This is also a parallel to the earlier conversation he had with the bank teller um, with the ba with the cash saying the same words over and over again until they lose meaning. And it's a stark contrast to the world that was portrayed in the earlier part of this film, the world of glances and kind of unspoken knowledge. Now there's um there's an excess of words and no no knowledge to be derived from it. Paragraph 19 ganz klar formuliert, Sie können zufrieden sein. Hier sehen Sie. <laughs> okay. And there are things that he can't see, like the paragraph 19, whereas previously things were very clear and established. He could look into somebody else's eyes and know what they mean. Manchmal schäme ich mich richtig mit dem Karren. Wieso schämen? Es fährt doch und was soll ein Auto anderes als fahren? Repräsentieren zum Beispiel. It's a very simple idea, but done kind of elegantly, the progression of different things that are commonplace in uh, Fox's life that Eugen tries to change in advance, like we're shown in not too demonstrable a way, but very clearly uh, Fox's flat, his car, his clothes, and we see the ways that Eugen tries to progress those. And we see those steps again, the steps that have uh, kind of like signified his relationship with uh, Eugen. He and Eugen share this relationship of these steps that was first established at Eugen's flat and then reinforced in uh, Max's furniture shop. And finally with their uh, fully furnished uh, apartment. So eine Wohnung hast du doch noch nie gesehen. Auch in guter Musik werde ich dir gelegentlich ein Nachhilfestündchen geben müssen. It's really interesting. You don't really expect this to be the kind of narrative that's fit for a feature-length film, but it really kind of fits. It's it's really kind of, in its own way, like, odd and, and fascinating that uh, the Fox and the Friends focuses on the way that you're changed by love the way that you are manip manipulated and self-manipulate to change like f fractionally elements of yourself to try and please your partner this like ship of theseus of of fox how much of him will be changed until he's unrecognizable until he's no longer the person that began this film and for someone who's so clearly just deceiving him i mean i guess that's comparable to like the heiress for example Uh, she's his sister. My lieber schöner junger Freund. And the smell motif again that Fox thinks that he smells and his sister kind of recognizes that they all smell. <laughs> that hand, what beautiful composition. Besser, glaube ich, wenn wir gehen. Meine Wohnung hier, in der meine Möbel stehen. Und da kann meine Schwester sich so benehmen, wie sie will. Die doch nicht so auf, Franz. Leider in letzter Zeit so leicht reizbar. Wir sind beide so leicht reizbar. Sieht da ganz auf mich. Ich kenne mich da aus. Vielleicht Marokko. Marokko? Oh, wo ist denn das? In Arabien, Schatz. Aha. No, it's not. Und du kannst That's like a little, like, um... Ganz eindeutig. Glass Onion moment. Schmidt. Where you realize that Oigen is not as cultured as he portrays himself to be. It's so sad to see all of that charisma, all of that 
Oh, it's the actor from uh, Ali, Fierce the Soul. Uh, but to see all that charisma, all that um, confidence sapped out of Fox, like, he was so self-assured at the beginning of this movie. He could command a room with just a look, and now he's just lost in the shuffle, being carted around by his abuser. It's a amazingly subtle depiction of of manipulation. I mean, the manipulation itself is clear, the actions them uh, themselves are clear, but the um, changes in character are very, very slight. Offer the apartment. Oh, uh, he's gonna lose it all. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. I can't believe he managed to manipulate him for this long. <sighs> Love doesn't discriminate, I guess. Completely blind. One chance encounter, completely blind. What else is love but manipulation to an impossible degree? Oh, Fox. Do you need a bibliotheque? That's the real reason. That's the real reason. That's all there is, really. I really hate that bed. It's so sad. Because that's really all there is. You were so much more at the beginning of this film. Absolutely destroyed by love. This is a good companion piece, I think, to Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. I think you could watch these two together as a good double feature. But I think also a good, like, kind of fusion of this and that would be um, Peter Van Kant. <laughs> Peter von Kant. Because uh, Peter von Kant takes the dynamics of Petra von Kant and kind of, like, explicates them, pushes them to their most obvious form. And in, in doing so, and then also it's a gender bent version of Petra von Kant. And so in doing so, it kind of like adopts some of the dynamics that are present in this movie as well. Are they going to punish him in his own company? He's so diminutive. He's such it's such a stark contrast from who he was at the beginning of this film. And it's really watching, like, a character be, like, completely dismantled before our eyes. Fox can moderne konzertante Musik auch nicht ausstehen. Aber wieso sagst du, dass ich keine moderne Musik... Aua! Was ist denn los? Ach nicht. Nur ein Versehen. Now it's an abusive relationship. Like this... this... <laughs> the Night Porter, St. Omer, you just see, like, a person who's been trapped. Trapped by a relationship. And... It's it's hard because you're like he's volunteered for this. He can walk away whenever he wants. But just as we're trapped by social dynamics, by um, oppressive systems, uh, love itself is a form of oppression. Love removes our autonomy. Love takes away our will. Love, when pointed in this direction, turns us into something smaller than an animal. It's a devastating portrait. That car is disgusting. Have you to ficken? Some kind of sandwich number, huh? <laughs> Do we want to get laid with a guy or with a broad? I don't care. But I still don't know what this guy wants. And we started this movie with an automobile, too. Huh. And bei Springer, da habe ich gedacht, ich sterbe. Habe ich plötzlich so große Schmerzen gekriegt im Herz, weißt du? Aber wenn du wirklich was hast, musst du zum Arzt gehen. Ich bin keiner. Wahrscheinlich ist es sowieso nur Hysterie. So, und jetzt lass mich weiter schlafen, bitte. Ciao, Herr Bieberkopf. Ich 
kann sie beruhigen. Organisch sind sie gesund. He's stressed. He should get out of this relationship. Doesn't seem to be doing well for him. Aufregung gehabt in letzter Zeit. Ein starken Stress. Ja. Je nachdem, wie sie sich fühlen, nehmen sie morgens und abends eine Tablette. Auf alle Fälle täglich höchstens zwei. He's gonna kill himself. No. Oh. That's a really weird interaction with what actually ended up happening in Fassbender. Willst du nicht vielleicht doch lieber was trinken? Nein, ich habe nein gesagt, wenn ich nein sage, dann meine ich nein. Jetzt zurück schon raus. Are they gonna kill him? I mean, okay, the, the movie's done a good job of like juggling a lot of possible endings. They're gonna throw him over, and it's gonna be the same kind of motif of the staircase. Was gemacht? Und du hast mir imponiert. Und ich habe geglaubt, dass ich dich liebe, aber du hast dich für mich geschämt. Strangling him. I mean, like within the reality of this film, you're like, uh, would they do this? Like, it seems like a, a gross like. A gross overstep or a gross extreme given what they've done previously in the film but like metaphorically you kind of understand that these characters have never cared about fox and so by extension how much of a leap is it for them to kill him in the end like criminally perhaps uh if there's like the question of them getting caught you understand that logically is not a good thing to do but in terms of the emotions of it in terms of the relationships they have with him ich habe den Schaden damals aufgefangen, wie du no weißt. Skin off of their... Es ist nur recht und billig. Und gerecht. Ja, so ist das also. It's, it's das no... Nimm alles! It's no huge act for them. Ich will nur wieder so sein können, wie ich bin. Welche Rückzahlung? Von den 100.000 Mark, Eugen. Welche 100.000 Mark? Die 100.000 Mark, die ich dir geliehen habe. Ich bitte dich, du hast pro Monat auch 5.000 Mark bekommen. Genauso wie es im Vertrag steht. Aber das war mein Lohn. Das war mein Arbeitslohn. Das war die Abzahlung des Darlehens, Dummchen. Du musst dir den Vertrag einfach mal durchlesen. Außerdem, du musstest ja hier nicht arbeiten. Das habe ich dir immer wieder gesagt. Das war eine völlig freiwillige Leistung von dir. Ich habe mir alles weggenommen. Alles weggenommen. Mach ich alles kaputt. Alles! Ja, auf! Alles mache ich euch kaputt! Schön gut. Ist ja gut. Ist das, Vater? Oh nein, Eugen. Du hast ja recht. Im Grunde genommen hast du recht. It's not your apartment anymore. Aber Herr Bieberkopf, der Herr Thies hat doch heute ein neues Schloss einbauen lassen. Eugen will von dir nicht mehr belästigt werden. Das ist alles, was ich weiß. This was a little trope that was repeated in Benediction as well. The um, inversion of the, the lovers' positions. Wir müssen jetzt auch langsam daran denken, diese furchtbaren Möbel wieder abzuschaffen. Ich hätte ja bald selbst Albträume bekommen. Lass mich endlich in Ruhe. Hau doch ab! Hau doch ab, wenn du deine Ruhe haben willst! Pack deine Sachen zusammen und hau ab! Komm zurück, Franz! Ich hab's doch nicht so gemeint! Franz! You should sell that Corvette. <clears throat> It's so unfortunate trying to obtain the um, the trappings of the wealthy. Everything you buy is of deprecated value. Nothing of it, like, if you're just replacing things that you already have, that already are you're comfortable with, that make you happy, the things you buy to assign status, like, their worth, their value already depreciates by 60%, by 70% as soon as you buy them. None of it is an investment in your future. None of it is uh, going to sustain you. It's just a signifier and it loses its value by being purchased. Oh, and they're going to bring that up here. The only value in these things is being expensive. If they are lived in, if they're used, their value immediately disappears. Das ist doch ein schönes Auto. Ist doch was Besonderes. Der macht doch was her. Neuwertiger und Anverkauf. 
<laughs> that's, that's something. Wie sagen die Damen des Malerhandwerks so schön, wer hochsteigt, braucht länger, bis er in den Farbeimer fällt. Aber eben nicht viel länger. Hey, aber ich kenne dich doch. Springer, gib mal zwei Bier auf meine Rechnung. Und ich dachte, du hättest wirklich eine Masse fürs Leben gelernt. <laughs> Richard, this is Bob. Oh, wow. Such is love. Such is romance. Such is the wheel of life. Such is the round. Yeah, I think so. It's big. How much do you pay? Was ich zahle. Everything. Ich will wissen, was ich zahle. Ich zahle alles. Ich zahle immer alles. Ja. Ich muss immer alles zahlen. Immer. Damn. 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 Fossmen are just special, man. What a talent. Gone too soon. All he's got left is that Valium. Oh, yep. It's a beautiful final shot, if it was a final shot. And somebody steals from him. Pick his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> How much is that? Sie werden überrascht sein, wie gut erhalten die Sachen sind. Fast jedes Stück. Ich bin ziemlich sicher, wir werden uns einig. Komm weg, da kommt jemand. He's had his pocket picked by the world. Er ist tot. Oh. Fassbender saw too much. He saw in too many directions. Ich will damit nichts zu tun haben. And it'll happen to you, too. Fassbender makes me feel all sorts of weird things. Rarely do I ever get to see such a honest portrayal of, like, the physiological and consequential, the fallout of what love feels like, than I do with Fassbender. People want to... People... When they make films, when they write stories, when they make art about love, they want to try and justify the things that they have suffered for. <laughs> if Fassbinder's living right in the moment, he he does not have any sort of uh, he he doesn't have any sort of resolution. He doesn't have any sort of closure. Is living right in the middle of the muck, and he's like, "This is what this fucking did to me." Man who lived too fast and too hard. Man, man, oh man. <laughs> uh, who else but he here's a quote from Fossbender uh, during the release of Fox and his friends <clears throat> there's a bunch of stuff he says about the film being about homosexuals but not uh, utilizing homosexuality as being the crisis of the film which is good that's that's a very evident good thing about the film uh, but the tail end, at the tail end of that the he says um, the problem is something quite different it's a love story where one person exploits the love of the other person, and that's the story I always tell. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, Fassbinder worked within the limits. Though the film is partially the film is partially based on the plight of his then lover, Armin Mayer, who, which was the uh, the um, the dedication at the beginning of the film. That makes sense. I'm reading up about his relationship with er with uh, Irm Hermann, and it's kind of weird. Gunter Kaufmann, that's an interesting story. That's uh, largely, I'm, I'm sure, what uh, what inspired the plot for Peter von Kant. Oh, he was in a relationship with El Hedy Ben Salem. Wow. Armin Meyer was a near-literate former butcher. During the week of Fassbinder's birthday, Meyer de deliberately consumed... In 1978, Meyer deliberately consumed four bottles of sleeping pills and alcohol in the kitchen of the apartment he and Fassbinder had previously shared, and his body was found a week later. Wow. Wow. 
a lot of a lot of tragedy in Fassbender's life. Oh, complicated man. Incredible, incredible filmmaker. Taken taken far too soon. Uh yeah, you you should check out you should check out Fox and his friends. Uh it's very cold, um, but it's like brilliant. It's dazzling. Um it's very funny. It it takes like very, very raw, very, very raw emotions about love and about romance and turns it into a pristine work, a gem like work. A very, very funny work. It's very, very funny how much we deal in our own self-destruction in so many ways, and in so many ways exemplified by Fassbender himself. Damn. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that was Fox and his friends. Uh, let me know if you've seen it, any thoughts you have on it, Fassbender, or his other works. If you like the stuff that I do, Subscribe to my Patreon, where you can watch earlier releases of these videos and some Patreon-exclusive ones of movies that are even more obscure than the ones on this channel. <laughs> and otherwise, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and arthouse films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.